Hi, this is the Mad Bird. Welcome to an episode of Wild Reading. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a book from Japanese literature. And it's one of the books that I fell in love with the moment I started reading. Because it's a book that I discovered on my own, nobody told me about, which is Kafka on the Shore for the famous author Haruki Murakami. By the way, there is an idea. I am, let's say, surprised that Haruki Murakami never got a Nobel Prize. And I'm just waiting, and his readers are waiting, for the moment he gets it. Because he writes books in a way we love it. Sure, we didn't expect the way he wrote books with, but the idea of the way he writes, he's not trying to make heroes. Even his characters are not heroes in the sense we know. They are just normal people, but the way they react to this life is what makes it interesting. Because what happens to them can happen to anybody in the world. And this makes us relate to the characters and the fiction, his writing in general. You can identify yourself in one of the characters and at the same time you can identify yourself with the story. Because you're learning something from the simple experience of everyday life. And this kind of life that you can imagine and at the same time you can understand has a message. And this message is suitable for you. Not trying to make up heroes we never see in our life or any fantasy characters, even though he's writing, even though he's writing magical realism. And by the way, for me, he's the best writer ever to write in magical realism. So his characters, even if he came up with a fictional character, he would give it a sense of reality. So he's not jumping away from reality. The case here, we start with Kafka on the shore. The story is simple but at the same time has a lot of meanings because a lot of boys think of it and a lot of men think of it. It is a story of a son and a father, mother in a broken family. In a broken family. There's a study that says 80% of families are broken families. There's no sense of unity between the family members. And in this case, yes. Because we start with Kafka Tomora a 15 year old boy who wants to leave the house and become a man. So we're on a journey to discover how he's going to become a man. Especially that he's a teenager, he's just 15 years old. So there is a kind of journey between becoming a teenager and going up to becoming a grown up. And he made it a real journey in real life. So. Kafka Tomura prepares himself, decides to leave home, he wants to leave his father and his house, but he's trying at the same time to escape the curse his father threw on him. Now, by the way, this kind of curse, it's a father controlling his son, because there is always a connection between the father and the son that cannot be broken. So the father controls this kind of relationship, that in the case of Kafka Tomura, this is a curse. So as a father, in trying to raise your son, we can understand from that, that it's either a curse or a bless. Either you're going to raise your son in the right way, or you're going to raise him in the wrong way. Either you're going to turn his life into heaven or hell. Because until the age of 14 or 15, the son depends a lot on his father to teach him everything about this life. And Kafka is leaving the house to, in search of becoming a man. Like this kind of thing, why doesn't he actually seek it with his father? And where is his mother? Where is his sister? That's the curse he throws on him. The father throws a curse. And this curse has to do with his mom and sister that he never saw. Or maybe he just remembers a vague idea. He always has the idea of that one day he's going to meet his mom. One day he's going to meet his sister. And maybe the prophecy his father mentioned will become true. And here we come to the Freud idea about Oedipus complex. Here about the mom, the relationship between the mom and the son. And he also come to the relationship between the sister and the son. But would we actually know that Kafka really met his mom in his journey? That's for you to read. On the other side, we have a character we all, as readers, wish to have the same ability that he has. We have, we have Nakata, a man who can talk to cats. Yes, he talks in a strange way, and he might use his name a lot instead of personal pronouns. You feel as if he's talking about someone else, not about himself. But his ability to talk to, talk to cats is really strange, because he even himself doesn't find it strange. 
maybe there's a message from the author that this character cannot deal with humans in the proper way. But sometimes you feel that Nakata knows things that other people don't know. And to figure out something while reading is that Nakata had a catastrophe when he was young. And that catastrophe was revealed by the interview of military soldiers. In this interview, they talked about the world war. Here, Haruki Murakami gets to the idea of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And he's explaining part of the effect on Nakata. That he has something weird in his mind, in the way he thinks, in the way he talks. But the ability of talking to cats is something that will get him involved in another world. But he didn't make any choices. He's not a person to make decisions. He didn't get things moving. But he plays a major role in the story. Because he knows things that other people don't know. And he might expect things that will happen just because he knows it. And he doesn't even know how he came to this knowledge. So the point is, you have a man, when he was young, he was affected by uh, the atomic bomb, which altered something in his mind. So he became able to talk to cats, but at the same time, he cannot communicate with humans. So he learns from animals and cats. Now, how do the stories connect together? This kind of connection is that Nakata, the person who talks with cats, and Kafka Tomura, the man who escapes to find the meaning of manhood away from his father, escaping from the prophecy his father gave him, what is the relationship between these two, two stories? Are they going to meet? Or is there something that happened to cause this kind of strange idea? Here is where the craft of Haruki Murakami comes. Because he connects both stories with an amazing plot. That there is nothing magical about it. But at the same time, it's extraordinary. But it looks normal. So you get connected because you want to know what's going on. There is something missing in the personality of Kafka Tomura. And at the same time, you know what's missing in Nakata. But it kind of gives you a sense of fear that we're not getting into the end. Because you know what the end is going to be. But at the same time, you're afraid that you're going to go to that end. And here is the result. Nakata has to do something. And he agrees to do it along with the mother of Kafka Tomura. So each one of them plays a role in the prophecy. And all that prophecy was played by the father of Kafka Tomura. But the end, Kafka Tomura escaped from hell. His father has a malicious scheme. And that scheme came even for his son. So what type of relationship we're looking at? And we think that part of Kafka Tomura is what pushed him to leave, not Kafka himself. Because the story begins with destiny. And the boy named Crow. And if we think of this, Crow is a very important bird when it comes to the Japanese culture, when it comes to the Japanese mythology, the Crow is important because the Crow gives you the truth. The Crow gives you the mission. The Crow, the crow always accompanies the main character in his actions, in his mission, in his quest towards finding himself. So in this case, I believe that the crow himself here plays the part of consciousness for this man. Like there is a part of the subconscious in the crow to give him the wisdom, to guide him. So after all, what Murakami wants to tell you is that people at this age, teenagers, adolescents, they need guidance towards being men. And this guidance, if they don't find it in the father, they're gonna find it somewhere else. And in our case, Kafka Tomorrow finds it in the journey, the real journey we go through alone in our life. That's why Kafka Tomorrow keeps repeating that he has to be the strongest 15-year-old boy. So the father, the source of strength, is not there. So where can Kafka Tomura find strength? And at the same time, what he's doing, is it connected to Tomura? Is it connected to Nakata? What does Nakata have to do with his, the mother of Kafka Tomura? The kind of all of this, they're all escaping from one devil, Kafka's father. But at the same time, they don't know that they're escaping him. And something happened in the past. Something happened in the past. The evil scheme of Kafka Tomura's father would affect everybody. But Kafka's mother and Nakata are trying to stop it in some way. 
because they were chosen to do it. All of these elements would come for a journey to learn at the end what is it manhood? What is becoming a man? What is the relationship between the father and son? And we can also take a look at the atrocity of the atomic bomb and the world war, what happened in Japan and how it affected the people. You can feel that Haruki Murakami brings part of his culture every time with it. And also you can see the music, the books, cooking, all of the skills that Murakami wants every single character to have. He always have people who know how to cook, he always have people who like music, he always have people who read different topics. So he gives you the basics of life in his point of view. Music, books, cooking, skills in general, because the more skills you have, the less people you need in your life. This is something really important, by the way. And by the end of the story, you come to think of, we are not created just to live a life and die. There is a reason why we are created, and there is a reason for what we're doing. And there is something we have to do. And this, by the way, gives it a very important sense in our life, a very important feeling. We have a target, then we have something to do. Then there is a reason for us to live. This is so important. If you want to know how these two cases got entangled and what does Kafka tomorrow have to do with Nakata and when does Nakata stop talking to cats? Is it when the sky rains fish? Hope you like this review. See you next time in an episode of Wild Reading.